Welcome to Worship at Lindale Lutheran Church on this fifth Sunday in Lent. I am Pastor Cheryl, as always, so glad to be here with you this morning. Together we continue our Lenten journey. Remember, our Bible study titled Surrounded by Grace is happening via Zoom as well as in person if you let us know in advance that you're coming at 6.15 on Wednesdays through the Wednesday after Easter. We have added participants each week. It isn't too late to join. Be watching for more information coming soon regarding either drive-in, parking lot worship, or drive-through Holy Communion for Palm Sunday next week. We sing our gathering hymn. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the giver of grace, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion and grace. Fountain of living water, Pour out your mercy over us. Our sins are heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Amen. We pray together the prayer of the day. O God of grace, with steadfast love you draw us to yourself, and in mercy you receive our prayers. Strengthen us to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit, that through life and death we may live in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hear now the readings for today. A reading from Jeremiah, 
chapter 31, verses 31 to 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Word of God, word of life. Psalm 51, verses 1 to 12. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Amen. Thank you, Steve and Lindale choir members for reading and for your music. How nice to hear our psalm sung as well as spoken this morning. The Gospel according to John, the 12th chapter. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death 
he was to die. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God, our Creator, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In our Old Testament lessons in the first four Sundays of Lent, we've revisited the covenants God made with God's people in the past. Today, Jeremiah looks forward to a new covenant. As wonderful as the promise God made at the Red Sea and at Mount Sinai was, this covenant will be even greater. Not only will God be their God, but they shall be God's people. This covenant will not be written on stone tablets, but in the very hearts of the people. Jeremiah looked forward to a time when everyone would know God. And the Hebrew verb translated here as know means to know as in with incredible intimacy and fullness, with all closeness. Jeremiah preached gospel. He preached good news. God will establish a new covenant to save the people. This promise is fulfilled for us in Christ. Our baptismal covenant, says one commentator, draws us to God's heart through Jesus and draws God's love and truth into our hearts. The part of the psalm that was sung today seeks that covenant, seeks that promise. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. During this season of Lent, we remember our baptism, or perhaps we look forward to our baptism. We are reminded of God's grace, reminded that in baptism, God's covenant of love is written in our hearts. And this happens because of Jesus. Today's gospel reading takes place after Jesus has raised Lazarus from the dead, after he has entered Jerusalem on Palm Sunday during the festival of the Passover. Jesus has entered the city for the last time. Crowds have gathered to hear him, even as others plot to destroy him. And now the Greeks, the Gentiles, want to see Jesus. That this is unusual, unexpected, is shown in the very deliberate way the disciples approach it. First, Philip goes to Andrew, and then together they go to Jesus. But of course the Greeks want to see Jesus. Jesus' mission is universal. Jesus' mission is for everyone. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. All people, everyone. And the hour has come, Jesus says. His whole life has been leading up to this hour. Jesus wants his disciples to have some understanding of this hour. One more time, Jesus tries to tell his disciples what his purpose really is. The hour has come, he tells them, and then he shares a rather odd proverb about a grain of wheat. The disciples don't really understand his words at the time. After they experience the resurrection, they will understand it better. But perhaps, as for us even today, the words will never be without mystery. The seed does not fall to the ground and die, the seed that does not fall to the ground and die remains alone and cannot bear fruit. The way to life is through death. Glory comes through crucifixion. How strange. This is not the way of the world. The world says glory comes by way of clear and total victory over others. The world says might makes right. The world says win at all costs. Don't worry about the losers. The world says losing is the end. Death is the end. But our amazing God says death must precede life. Death is not the end, even for us losers. And as Lent draws to a close, we, like the Greeks, want to see Jesus. And to see Jesus, we will have to look up. Because Jesus has been lifted up. Lifted up on a cross, like a loser. And that is an amazing and incredible grace-filled mystery. Glory does come through crucifixion. Jesus is glorified in the hour of his anguish and pain and death. As one preacher writes, the scripture reads, now is the judgment of the world. 
and this is the judgment. God so loved the world, the cosmos, the big world, all nations, all people. God so loves the world. This love attracts the whole creation and all peoples. This love draws people to God, draws people to worship. If you are worshiping today, even if you just showed up and you aren't sure why, or even how you got to this Facebook page or YouTube channel, you can be confident that God drew you here. God's love drew you here, and Jesus is rejoicing. And so we losers do proclaim with Jesus the glory of the cross and the resurrection, the reality of life through death. We rejoice that God said yes to all people when our repeated no, no, no was destroying us. And it isn't so much about Jesus being sacrificed for us, taking our punishment, because an angry God demanding a blood sacrifice seems strangely out of sync with the God of mercy and love and grace that we see through the life of Jesus again and again and again. The initiative for reconciliation, for reconnection, for new life comes from God. We didn't offer to try and make things right. We couldn't. It is God who makes the first move toward reconciliation. Jesus being born, God becoming human, the word made flesh and dwelling among us is the first step in God's plan. Our God, in order to draw us to God, suffered everything we have suffered or will suffer. And God did it willingly. Even when Jesus said it troubled his soul, even as Jesus fleetingly, humanly wondered, should I say, Father, save me from this hour? Even when in anguish Jesus cries, take this cup from me, God suffered all that we can or will ever suffer in order that we might know the fullness of God's love, in order that we might know that the way to life is through death. God took human nature upon God's own self. God lived in poverty and died in shame and torment, not to glorify suffering for the sake of suffering, but rather to show us that even in the darkest hour, we can hold on a little longer. We can still work to lessen the pain and need of others. And we can trust that in our pain, in our grief, God cries with us. Our God knows the pain of this world. Our God cried when his friend Lazarus died. Our God lost a son. His name was Jesus. And our God tells us, just wait, wait, and I will hold you. Just wait, cry. Tears are needed. Tears can be grace. Our God says weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes in the morning. So just wait, just wait. In the end, it will be okay. Just wait, because if it isn't okay, it isn't the end. Just wait. Easter is coming. Just wait until the resurrection. Our God gives us new life again and again and again, gives us grace, amazing grace. Amen. Yeah. Uh -huh.
My God, my Savior, has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy He reigns, unending love, amazing grace. The Because of God's amazing grace, we are able to confess our faith. We do so today using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. You wash us through and through and remember our sin no more. Make your church a community of forgiveness throughout the world. Give your people courage to forgive. Through them, show the world new possibilities. Bless our bishops, Anne and Elizabeth. God of promise, hear our prayer. You fill the earth from tiny grains of wheat to the mighty thunder. You fill the earth with your presence and you call us to attend to your will for all creation. Grant weather that prepares the soil for seeds. Protect all from violent storms, floodings, and wildfires. God of promise, hear our prayer. You promise to write your law on our hearts. Guide citizens and leaders throughout the world to shape communities that reflect your mercy, justice, and peace. Give them the creativity to work for the welfare of all. God of promise, hear our prayer. You sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Restore the joy of all who need to know your presence. Those who are lonely or feel unforgivable, those who need, need healing of mind or body, everyone suffering from COVID-19 and those we name now, aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Matt, Jane, Ken and Sherry, Vernet. We pray for those who are dying and for all who grieve. Especially today, we remember Chris and Lane Weir and their family as they grieve the death of Chris's mother, Cheryl. Hold them close, grant them the peace that only you can offer. God of promise, hear our prayer. We entrust ourselves in all our prayers to you, O faithful God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you all. Please take a moment to share the peace with those around you, and if you are alone this morning, give yourself a hug. Feel your brothers and sisters reaching out to you, and know that God is with you, sharing the peace that comes from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We worship with our offerings. You are invited to try online giving using our website, lindalelutheranchurch.com, or our Facebook page. Mailing your gift is also always a good option. Your generosity will allow us to continue to cover the cost of online worship opportunities such as this one and to serve our neighbors. Thank you so much. Today we sing our offering prayer. Everything is yours, Lord. Everything comes from Receive the blessing. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen, holy, and beloved, freed to love and serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing to others. In the name of the Creator and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We sing our sending hymn. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.